Hi, it's me again. Welcome to a little extra video. This is my Skinning Your Kayak by Darker Special. And uh, today in my shop I have this uh, three hatch by Darker. It's, um, it's an old one and uh, it needed re-skinning. And um, I don't want to explain everything to you because I already explained a lot of things in the previous videos. But in this video I want to just show you what's special for covering the Bidarka. So watch the other videos and then watch this one. And you've got all you need to know about your Bidarka project. So as you can see this is a pretty long craft. Um, and as always I need to tighten the skin by stretching it lengthwise first. This is an extra long kayak so I need to stretch it extra much. And as you can see I've made a stitching here. Really crude but still functional. And it will keep the fabric in place when I stretch it lengthwise and I also tied a strap to the to the stern piece so now I'm gonna show you the stitching and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna deal with the special bow here because what I do is I stretch it from the front now you can see it's stuck at the the rear end um, and since uh, it doesn't have a pointed tip like a Greenland kayak then I need to just make it as pointy as I can make a little loop here but I need to do it back here so what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna judge the distance this is 10 this is 20 this is 10 so here we have the magical 30 centimeters and then I add a little extra. This is like two inches. So this is the amount of stretch for this long kayak. A little more than normal, a little more than 30, 35, I guess. This is where the stitches go. You see the shape of the bow here. You can actually move it slightly down. need to center the fabric also. I forgot about that. Okay, so this is it. So this is the profile of this particular bow and I'm gonna just do a little line here. And here goes my stitching. And again, this is really, really, really simple. It's just back and forth. It's a temporary set of stitches, so they don't need to look pretty. They just need to hold the fabric in place. Each stitch is about a little more than one centimeter long. Like this. So you just go forward, 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 and then at the end of my line I start going backwards, exactly opposite, so you can clearly see the pattern now. Simple, back and forth stitches. Do a knot and an extra knot, which makes it a reef knot. Then I make an extra knot on top of that. I don't know what to call this, double reef knot or something. Now having done this, I can lift it off and I go to the rear end, pull the fabric over, put it in place, 
Here goes. This. So now the fabric is stretched uh, lengthwise. It went well. Um, and the first the stitching I want to do now is the front here. If you have a bifid bow, then good luck with that. Maybe you should sew it before you stretch it lengthwise. In this case, I just have this little fold here, row of stitches that holds the fabric in place. And now I want to get this sewn in. This is a much more solid construction than the traditional split bows. Um, but also split bows are fun to make, but a lot of work. And uh, as, as I said, this one will take more damage. So, so I just find my hole and now I'm sewing with a really long thread and it has two needles on it. And um, I actually waxed it a little bit before I started because in this particular case it's nice that the thread just sits where you put it. There's no tightening really or oh, the tightening is really easy. So now this just goes around like this and um, to complete every stitch I want to do two rounds. Make sure you have a nice even line here. Two rounds. So you just continue forward with one of the threads. And it doesn't matter with the pattern because you can always make it work your way. Now I notice it's a little loose here beneath, but that's for me to to tighten later with the with the real finishing stitching. So now here goes it's it's simply two two one two one one now I switch to the other needle and I go out here make sure it looks pretty on the back too and that is two and two and two Getting there. Now the last round actually goes inside the kayak over the top of the bow piece and back again. And remember, if that it looks a little curly and not too good, then it's not it's not done yet. There's still more to come. But at least this is how I want to end it by taking out these two in the middle, tightening the last bit of fabric. So this is how it looks. One end of the thread goes across and two loose ends meet. Now I will tighten them. Just want to show you what's different on the stitching. This, the stitching is basically the same as I've showed you on a Greenland kayak. 
but um, I will start out slightly differently because the main difference is I want the seam to be lined up in a certain place. I want the seam to be lined up with this stringer which means when I'm standing on this side of the kayak I will have long stitches on this side short stitches on, thi on this side so and I will try to make the small stitches lie on the what's for me now the outside of this line here because then the fold that will come later will be lying just exactly on top of the stringer and that looks nice so you noticed how this was ready so now I can actually pull that last bit of fabric as I go. I'm going to give you a close-up view of the action here. So again, like always, I start about a couple of inches behind where the, the last mossy goes. So the location of the cockpit, so I will have a little bit of fabric to do the cockpit with. And uh, in my last extra video, I showed you how I would just make a half stitch knot around my thread, like this, and how that will not slip. So now I'm starting here. Doing little stitches on the outside. Actually, all the beginning stitches here can be a little smaller than normal. And just before I turned on the camera, I did wet the fabric again. And uh, look how I'm increasing the distance. I'm using the, the technique I just showed you in my last video, where the stitching and the, and the tightening of the fabric is the same operation so but using one or the other method that doesn't really make a difference the what I want to show you is where the stitches should be uh, lined up so and I just have to try now there's really, really no formula of how to, how to do this. Now I'm tightening it as hard as I can and having done so, the two pieces of fabric comes completely together. And if you look closely, you see that my stitch here is actually not where I want it. I want it here, but it's here. Well, it doesn't matter, but I try to adjust it in my next stitching, which goes a little farther away from me. And then now I take my chances and do a real one. If it's not perfect, I can just redo it. Mm -hmm. Now, I need my tightening stick. I just made a small improvement of my tightening stick. I cut a little, made a little cut in it, and that way I can curl it faster. That's it. Pliers on. So, what are my considerations now? First of all, it needs to be drum tight. I'm not sure, I think it could be better, but I only did two stitches. It's a forgiving material, so it's, it's not a big deal. If I do a little more on the next stitch, then it's okay, probably. And uh, how are the stitches lined up along the, the, the stringer here? It looks like I, I adjusted this this one. I wasn't happy with that, so I adjusted it a little bit by taking the next stitch a little farther out. 
and it seems like it worked nicely. So I'm just gonna try to continue that pattern. So. so what I do when I stitch now is that I take that stitch farther out on the side than on the opposite side. See this is closer to the edge and this is farther out on the side. So the idea is when I pull it together they will come exactly where I want them. Oops. Okay, let's see. So, tightening with a tightening stick. Okay, I have a feeling this is not tight enough. It went too easy. Looks okay, but still, this is just a small bit. I'm going to increase the distance on the next stitches. I just did a little more stitching here. I kept it wet all the time and it comes out nicely. Um, gradually here towards the end I have decreased the distance. I'm just scared that it gets too tight. That's the problems with uh, by darkers is that uh, there's a little longer space between every deck beam at least in the ones I built and uh, therefore if, if you overstretch it you can make it really flat between the, 
the gunnels flat will flatten out between the deck beams and that doesn't look perfect. So if you have watched me closely you will notice I've done something here. I made a little cut down here just to open up this and suddenly I see ooh there's not enough fabric maybe there will be there will be enough fabric for sure. I just need to go all the way out here because I don't think it's safe to start opening the first initial stitching before I have sewn it to all the way out here to this point. I make a temporary oops. Well, fastening. I just take a couple of extra stitches back and forth here just to make sure it doesn't run anywhere. <laughs> so this will all be covered when we later do the folding seam. So it doesn't need to look pretty yet. But soon. Okay. Now it can't really run anywhere, right? So now I think it's safe to take my knife and just open up the first stitches I did here. That's it. So basically what we do now is we I just start stitching up here making sure there's enough fabric and then I stretch it like in this direction and I go all the way around just exactly the same style of stitching that I used to get here. The just got around the corner here. And I just stretch it. Leave a little space between the two pieces of fabric so that I'm able to stretch it by pulling the thread. And you see where I pull it, it kind of stretches out the, the wrinkles. So, and I keep aligning so the stitches will follow the same pattern as the deck line here on this side the visible short stitches and then on this side which is opposite side of where the camera looks I have the neat little visible ones that's better the fabric will be folded over this later so I can make a knot here on the inside I just Pull the string around the nearest stitch and do a half stitch. Pull it really tight. I can do a second one. And I can cut it and cover it up with folding stitches later. Good morning. I had a long day yesterday, but I finished the kayak, at least all the stitching. And I just want to give you a view of what it looks like now. As you can see, I've made this fold. It's all done. Neat. It follows the same pattern as the deck seam. And you can see the deck seam looks pretty nice, like I wanted it to. Here comes the cockpit. I made it ready. I haven't attached it yet. And if you wonder what the, the grayish stuff is, then it's the the edge of the sea sock. It goes into a slot in the in the cockpit combing. So I'm going to make three sea socks for this one. And um, I just continue. See, the seam is also pretty nice. On the last one I had a little trouble here at the end, you can see 
looks nice until this point and then I found it hard to center it but still I think it looks pretty good and if you look at the end here this folds out nicely around the frame and the end is just perfect so I'm happy so what comes next is uh, putting on the cockpits sewing the sea sock and doing all the paint and varnishing rigging etc etc so but at least <clears throat> combined with the other videos you have all you need to know about stitching your badaka together